Welcome to the Kiara Kai podcast. I'm Moe from Tahiti. And I'm Mikey from Malaysia. And today we're joined by Manu Tefon, a self taught photographer, musician, and full time student who lives the motto where imagination meets reality. Manu, great to have you there. <laughs> I am excited to be here. I'm excited to be here. Nice to meet you for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so tell us more about you. Uh, so, my name is Manu. I'm from Tahiti, like Mueve said, and actually Mueve is my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Never <laughs> seen this man this before. Is, uh, but this is very fun. Um, I've done music, photography, slash videography for a few years now, and uh, it's something that I really enjoy. I've been in BYU for almost three years, and I'm studying marketing and uh, supply chain. Yeah. Mm, okay. So, Manu, how did you discover your passion for photography, music, or learning new things in general? Oh, man. I think that, like, when it comes to learning new things, and especially those creative disciplines, it started from a pretty young age, actually. If you look back at some of our old photos, Um, you could see my dad and I, uh, he would be playing the guitar and we just would be around. So we kind of grew up in that environment. Uh, but it's later in high school that I started and picked up music production, really, making music. Uh, it, well, it started off as a bet with a friend who told me, oh, I bet you wouldn't be able to um, do this and learn how to use the software. And I sometimes I like to say it's like the biggest mistake of my life to have started because once I did, I was hooked. And uh, I've just have been making music ever since. Uh, I was able to sell a few tracks online and uh, come here, continue that journey. Uh, and yeah, it's been really fun. Really fun. That's so awesome. And um, what would you say has like kept you kept your motivation once you started discovering that you really enjoy music i think the there's two things that keep me motivated is well first is just the passion for it uh and just how music um but not just music all sorts of creative arts um are a channel or an outlet through which people can express themselves uh, in tahiti we don't really have that culture of opening up To people so i think being able to express myself in a different way uh, non-verbal was pretty cool and then the second um thing that motivates me or keeps me going is the good feedback um i'm not like a huge artist or anything but one of my latest remixes on youtube uh, has passed 500,000 views and mm. when you see the good feedback so cool. cool comments from people it, it makes you feel good Um, and so I definitely say that people support from like total strangers, just writing nice things is one of my main motivators. Mm -hmm. yeah. And speaking, um, speaking of that, as a self-taught artist, what challenges did you face and how did you overcome them? Like, have you received any yeah. negative feedback? Oh, man. So the biggest challenge, and I think this, uh, most self-taught people can can say the same thing or can agree with this is not having a mentor or not having someone showing you the ropes right because you're just on youtube spending hours watching tutorials some of those tutorials are not even good uh, so you're trying mm. to like sift through like a notion of information mm. um that just to find something valuable i guess and then even once you do it you're like man why doesn't it sound or why doesn't it look like the guys in the tutorial mm -hmm. even though i'm doing mm -hmm. the same exact thing uh and I, i'd say that's like a big challenge um not having someone behind you uh as a mentor in a way mm -hmm. um but that's also what i guess forges your character yeah uh, and helps you see if it's something that you really want to pursue or if it's some just a temporary interest yeah Yeah. Also, I'm curious what music you guys listen to. Oh, <laughs> well, maybe you wanna go first. <laughs> For me, I'm really basic queen, so I really like pop music. Mm -hmm. Um, I just think that I I think we grew up. I grew up like my mom listened to a lot of pop music, and that's what I like. Mm -hmm. I think for me, I grew up listening to, because my dad he loves country music. 
Cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yes, but because I have two older brothers, so I grew up listening to punk rock, rock music mm. in general, emo, screamo. Even until now, once in a while, I would go back to music that I, I listened to, to when songs. I was a teenager because it brings back so much memories, memories growing yeah. up. But I would claim myself as a universal listener. So I listen to all kind of music, um, but less of like heavy metal, not really into it, mm. but other kind of music. Yeah. <laughs> How about cool. you, Manu? Man, um, well, first, I just thought it was funny that you said you're not really into heavy metal but you like screamo and things yeah. like that so yeah. it's your like, thing is like yeah, pretty similar screaming, but, <laughs> but not really yeah. it's like borderline here and there <laughs> yeah makes uh, I mean it doesn't really make sense but <laughs> interesting I guess mm-hmm. um, for my part I listen to a lot of electronic dance music oh yes um, sometimes things more on like the pop side uh, such as artists like Kygo or um, Griffin and other times oh, are you going to their concert yeah going weekend? to their concert oh. tomorrow so hype I know I wanted to go but <laughs> it's sold it. out right. because oh, I want to listen crazy. to Zed oh because oh, oh. I grew up listening <laughs> yeah. to Zed Zed's oh. good too uh, so yeah just like that kind of vibe is what gets me going um, but honestly I could listen to pretty much everything except country <laughs> mm, yes <laughs> I listen to only certain country music like the one uh that people know the most yeah but just because my dad listened to country music all the time i think yeah. some of them like the love songs on country they have good ones mm-hmm. country road take me home yes, yeah yes, you know i love yeah. that's so awesome and so yeah. can you talk about one of the projects or a piece of work that you are particularly proud of and what inspired it um does it have to be like um, photo music or whatever just yeah like it can be anything okay, can I give like one of each yeah, <laughs> yeah of course <laughs> so uh, okay starting by by music um, there there's man it's been maybe like six months now I released my first um, real personal track uh, on Spotify and YouTube its name is Stranger uh, what's fun about it is that I did everything from the songwriting to the um, production and everything in between. Mm, um, I singing. hired uh, someone online mm. uh, to sing as well. That's the talent I was not blessed with. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I have a nice voice. Right. <laughs> I love to sing, but in the shower, in the car. In the but car. Same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> same. Uh, it's like, uh, maybe I'll keep that that one hidden. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, um, and the, the cool thing about it was to see the support of first my friends, uh, who just saw it and I had like a few friends send me like their reactions to it and Cute. Uh, one of them like was like oh man I got like all these bumps yeah goosebumps. goosebumps um, and then we went to Japan last year and then people who don't even speak English we made them listen to a song and one of the girls just went, she was bawling she was crying oh, what that's and crazy she was, she was like, man I really like this song oh that's and adorable so, like, that, that was really special to me because mm-hmm. you know it's something you pour your heart into mm-hmm. uh, and you see people react in a way because I guess a lot of us people including uh, you probably who do creative work uh, we enjoy when our work touches other people Mm -hmm. Uh, whether it's you know uh, music or writing or painting yeah and i think sometimes like it's hard to be proud of yourself because sometimes you get used to what you put out so you're more like critical Mm -hmm. oh yeah the imposter syndrome mm -hmm. but when you have like someone else tell you like oh it's actually really good then you're like Oh wait, maybe it is. Maybe really it like that much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think like that, that that was like a big reason why I I felt pretty excited. Uh, it's just to see that oh well, even though I start to hate my work after listening to it like hundreds mm. of times over and mm-hmm. over, you just see like the negative about it. What's not good enough? But other people don't necessarily see that, mm-hmm. and it's through their eyes in a way that you're able to see the beauty. Yeah, that's of your super own cool. Work. Um, and also just like last thing about that song is that um, it got played on the radio back in Tahiti oh so wow that was cool. so you're low-key famous <laughs> 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 Manu is I like low-key famous <laughs> back <laughs> in Tahiti <laughs> no but yeah 
That's so fun. That's yeah. True. And how do you balance being a full-time student with, you know, pursuing your art- artistic journey? Oh, um, I think... Oh, man, do you ever uh, get overwhelmed because you definitely. know you're so passionate about your hobbies mm-hmm. but at the same time you have a lot of assignments and work mm-hmm. and you're also being club president this semester yeah, yeah. and uh, other responsibilities not gonna lie it, at times I put those passions a little bit on the side not that I want to uh, but I, I think that that's the danger though it's like it's easy to just say oh I've got this amount of homework to do or i've got five meetings to attend this week or whatever right um but i think that there's always time to do to work on what you love at least a little bit every day Mm. Uh, even if it's like 15 minutes but 15 minutes where you're really into it then it's better than zero i I think like that's a big mindset that i've had for a few years now is non-zero which means basically something is better than nothing Mm-hmm. Uh, even if it's not perfect better put something out there uh, for example that song um, not the one on the radio but my remix that hit like 500,000 views on YouTube now, it was not something I was proud of I didn't really like it I had it like in my hard drive for like four months before that mm-hmm. but since I hadn't posted anything I was like well might as well post it and it turned out it was the most popular thing I've ever put out there people liked it a whole lot more than I did mm-hmm. and that reinforces the concept of avoiding uh, zero or the non-zero and something is better than nothing. Mm. Yeah. So since you, the passions that you pursue, so photography, videography, and also music are things that you can learn by yourself, what would you say is the value of still getting an education? Um, I think the biggest, well, two things. First is that I don't know everything. There's always more to learn. Um, I've been doing this now for quite a few years, right? And there's always more to learn. And then the second would be maybe a networking or connections. Mm. Uh, because coming to school here, at first I didn't, I wasn't planning on coming to BYU Hawaii. But coming here, uh, my eyes were open in a way. And I was able to meet amazing people, whether it's professors, friends, um, other types of mentors who have um, helped expand my view on things and broaden my horizons so i'd say like that is one of the most valuable things that you can get when you pursue um, your education yeah i agree with that um same with you i never wanted to come here i Mm -hmm. never expected to further my education here um i guess you know things happen in my life and then i came here i i wasn't that excited but i came here because I always wanted to further my education. But mm. now that I'm a senior, looking back, there are so much things that I've learned from the professors, my friends around here, even my workplace. Mm-hmm. And it's something that I know I couldn't get it anywhere. Yeah. And it's something that I value so much. Even even like here, talking with you guys, it's so amazing how um, like you, Manu, you just, you know, you're a self-taught artist. I don't think I could do that. I love, Same. I love attending music festival. I'm a, I love attending fun, concerts, though. you know, right. I love enjo- the fun time. Yeah. Mikey is there, but doing it <laughs> like recording music or I don't know, remix. No, I'm not, I'm not that, but I love to just be present in that mm. moment. Mm. Yeah. How about you? I love that. Yeah. I'm definitely not a musical person. So I took piano like growing up, but, I cannot, I cannot like create music <laughs> at all. Mm-hmm. But I do enjoy it, and I think that's what is super cool about music is that you don't need to be good at it, mm-hmm. or you don't need to know how to do it to enjoy it. And it's even I can imagine even better when you can do both when oh, you can yeah. enjoy it and Just like know singing. how to create it. Yes, yes, yes. I I sometimes when people ask like, oh, what kind of instrument you would like to play? I'm like, no, I don't care about it. I would love to sing. Like I'm have so good voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you have a good bo- nice. voice, you don't need to <laughs> you play. Don't need <laughs> play. Right. You don't need instruments. Yes, and also Manu, I'm pretty sure you have a. Uh, a news or something that you would like to share about your club in BYU Hawaii yeah <laughs> tell us more about that club <laughs> okay guys this one is pretty cool so <laughs> listen attentively <laughs> uh, this spring semester we're bringing uh, to BYU Hawaii um, the nightclub yes uh, <laughs> <laughs> I honestly can I say something I was so excited so my friend Ryan 
he's the president of Filipino club. So me and Ryan were good mm-hmm. friends. And then he forwarded um, an info about this club. So I thought it's just a concert, a club being thing like off campus. And I'm like, wait, it's BYU. And then... And then so I just keep forward it to my friends and yes, we're all joining Thank the you. club. Oh, that's so fun. <laughs> yes. You know, I mean, yes, we love having party off campus, but it's <laughs> nice to have party here, real party here. So we're so excited for that one. <laughs> and, uh, I really appreciate <laughs> that. And if, uh, I don't know if I have time yeah. for this, but oh, if I could just on, share a little bit about like division mm-hmm. and what came behind, because it's more than just a party. Um, one of my big goals that I've been working on over a few couple of months is to develop a big music festival in Tahiti mm. um, because we've got the landscapes, we've got the opportunities, but just nothing has been set uh, to really um, capitalize on mm-hmm. those things. And I think our country, which, which is a very touristy country, could benefit from it. Uh, but how is this connected to the music club? Well, before running such a huge event or large-scale project, we wanted to try our... Uh, uh, minimum viable product uh, so like our test run and it's through this club mm-hmm. um, and the vision is that people who come whether there's five attendants uh, or 50 or 100 they all have the same experience they all enjoy themselves mm-hmm. uh, as soon as you step into the room into our activity you'll feel like you're not on campus anymore you're somewhere else and it's all about that experience yeah, so um, our goal for club fest which happened yesterday and today was to get uh, 50 people so 25 25 but yesterday um during our first day we hit 80 people 80 ah, new members. Yes. So did you uh, hit 100 yet yes yes <laughs> so, so excited. we're really excited about it and one of the things we did to try to make it fun make it cool was that those who signed up to the club and followed us on instagram here during those two days of club fest they got a drink ticket Ah, uh, how much is the fee? Uh, so the fee is like five dollars. Okay. It's pretty cheap, uh, cheaper than other clubs. Yeah, it's it's also than cheaper that. than off-campus clubs, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're right. Because clubs out there, it costs about fifteen and above, <laughs> while the clubbing here is cost like five dollars. Right. So go to Manu and please <laughs> register yourself. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's gonna be fun. We've got our opening social uh, in two Fridays, so on May twenty fourth. The location is still uh, in in the works, but it'll be really fun. Yes. We're gonna got have like um, face painting, UV Can lights. Can we please make like a Coachella oh, theme? That, that's definitely. <gasps> oh, that would be so, fun. Yes. there's that's like a, a strong idea. theme. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then for clothes and social, we're planning to do something outdoors, really more of a festival vibe. Yes, uh, that with is different so fun. activities, not I just the, the the concert. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, guys. Um, I'm doing a little bit of shameless self-promotion right here. <laughs> oh, that's good about, because, uh, you know, <laughs> join the nightclub. we have a festival lover here, so I <laughs> would love to attend. Um, speaking of, you know, y- your goals and dreams to have like a festival back in Tahiti. <laughs> um, so I'm from Malaysia, the Borneo Island. Yeah. So we have this, it's like Coachella, but Borneo version. So every summer, the they would invite um, artists around the world to uh-huh. perform like a, it's like a Coachella, but you know how Coachella, they do concert in the desert, but yeah. in Malaysia, they do it in the rainforest. Yeah, man, that's so, cool. you know, a lot of face that's painting cool. and then a lot of uh, ethnic uh, artists uh-huh. playing music for three days straight. Right. So I hope something would happen like that to <laughs> Tahiti. So I would have a reason to go. Yeah. <laughs> please, that would be so Please do, please do. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, it's all about the experience, guys. All about the experience. And that's what we're hoping uh, that those who join our club um, take away. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want them to feel that it was not only worth their time, but that for the next semesters, they'll c- still talk about it and think of it fondly. Mm-hmm. And also, th- um, what's the what's the official name of the club? The nightclub. The nightclub. <laughs> so it's, it's still within the honor code. Uh, well, it already got approved. Uh, so... Don't worry about that, guys. Don't worry. It's still honor code yeah. friendly, though. Yeah. <laughs> and we're still going like, to have fun, you know? Yeah. And because, like, honestly, of course, we're going to stay within standards, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it, we just wanted a name that people could, like, recognize. Yeah. Um, something and catchy. That, yeah, yeah, catchy. Something fun. Because if we said, like, electronic music club, 
it, w- yeah, it wouldn't have the same appeal, yes, right? Especially here in international setting, right. not everyone yeah. is familiar with, R- with those terms, the right. language. Yeah. Right. The nightclub, everyone knows everyone what a nightclub knows. is. Even though you don't go to the nightclub, but everyone knows what it is. Mm-hmm. So I like that. So thank you so much, Manu, thank for sharing you your for journey and insights with us today. And guys, remember, creativity knows no boundaries. Until next time, uh, keep uh, dreaming. Can, can I say something real quick? Oh, yes. Guys, <laughs> another chef, a sh- shameless self-promotion plug. <laughs> <laughs> Follow me on YouTube, Instagram, at Kawen, K-A-U-E-N. Do it, and do it. I'll see it. you guys. Thanks for having me. (laughs) And keep dreaming and turning those dreams into reality. Mahalo. Thank you.